uh, bread cones, see? So you just kind of let it rip. And, um, and you walk around and enjoy your afternoon, you know, look at sights, look at the sounds, uh, enjoy people, you know, just kind of really get to know the atmosphere, get to know, you know, the architecture, uh, put on your um, Rick Steves audio guides, and basically soak in Sevilla. And that's what I learned about Spain, it's kind of their, their mentality. It's like soak it in, uh, just take it easy, enjoy the moment, you know, don't uh, feel, you know, pressured to do anything you don't want to do, and, and just really enjoy the moment. Hello, good morning. morning. We're gonna go to an olive oil something. Milk? Bath? Milk? No. no. I'm pretty sure it's an olive oil bath. Uh, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll have to find out. Yeah, so we're gonna go to an uh, olive oil mill and uh, see how they're processed, they're harvested, they're grown. Um, and then we're gonna figure out how to eat olive oil perfectly. And it's probably gonna involve Jeremy's reservoir technique. But uh, we've we'll been loving the olive oil here and the olives. So it's about time to get serious. Maybe evening for some of you, who knows. Um, we are here at an olive oil farm, factory, grower, pressery, distributor, Mel. house. We'll see. I don't know exactly, but this is a olive oil day and we're excited to give you um, some oil-tastic facts and experiences for us first um, and then for you second. We're gonna go on a tour and hopefully we get to try some fantastic olive oil here in Sevilla. Um, one third of the world's olive oil comes from Spain. So how could we not stop here and experience that? And 80% uh, of this region is dedicated to the olive. So we're excited and uh, we're gonna squeeze some juice out of this moment and hopefully extract some goodness uh, and figure out what we come up with um, for really improving our lives one olive at a time. That is the old version of the olive press. First, that's your house now. So enjoy and feel like that, okay? Okay, hey, have... it's quite the invitation. Basilipo, okay? Basilipo is the name of our company. It's the name of our brand, okay? Basilipo means today a small town between the forest from the moon. The smaller one that we have and the older one too, we have no more than 200 trees, all of them from Manzanilla variety. Manzanilla is a real bitter variety and it's one of the most common around the world. We're going to learn something about varieties because all in Spain you can find more than 200 different varieties. So imagine, okay, we difference the oil not only by the variety, we difference them by the moment of harvesting. Because we think that if we choose a moment when the fruit is completely green, we used to call it early harvest, the fruit gonna give us most, more uh, spiciness and bitterness sensations than if we use a later moment when, for example, people used to harvest December. Okay, here to get the idea, we started the last year, September 27. I love that everything here is organic. They don't use any pesticides. They just plant flowers, very fragrant ones to distract all the insects and they say it works really well. So pretty cool. There's a really big emphasis on sunlight and the amount of sunlight that each olive gets. And so they decided to cut their harvest down significantly in order to you know, receive the sunlight equally. What they do is to look for green olive oils. How? They jump one of the most important steps in the production, which is to clean the fruit. Because when we harvest, we're going to receive fruit and leaves. If we mix those leaves in the milling moment with the fruit, 
with chlorophylla, we're going to find the green color in our oil. So if you look for an oil by the color, you are helping the bad producers. The professional glass to taste don't let you to see the color for not to be influenced of it. So that's a special step that I need to tell you. If you're just feeling like you haven't achieved enough by the age of 30, just remember these olive trees actually don't start producing fruit that they use until they're about 30. So calm down, chill out, it's all gonna be okay. And you know, take your time, let things grow. Let things get stronger. Let the essence of who you are really develop. It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. What we're going to do is to throw everything and the fruit gonna roll down while the leaves fall down. The fruit, because this is a really special moment. Imagine, we need the help of a donkey. Press, we let them under the press and with the movement, we're going to create force until when all of the liquid appear. That was the first way created in the Roman Imperial times. We learned that only 2% of the flowers actually end up producing fruit. So if you feel like your ratio is bad, you know, you feel like only 2% of what you do succeeds, you're already doing better than an olive tree. So there's a positive point. Here is where magic happens. So with the movement that we're going to see now, what we look for is a moment that we call the first tears, when the olive oil starts to cry. In the moment when those drops appear on top of the mash, we need to stop the movement. It's very But to buy non-filter olive oil is not a good idea because you don't know how much time those sediments have been in the bottom. And all of them are labeled by hand. We have now, and I have the process. Okay, I'm going to show you the process completely. Imagine that it's empty. We came until here, okay? The first thing is to introduce nitrogen inside the bottle, okay? Trying to create the same stage without contact or sitting with the oil. Later, the bottle is full of nitrogen, so we came until here. That machine has a balance, and the machine knows the weight of the empty bottle and the full bottle. So we leave it empty and we receive it full. It's time to take my relationship with olives to the next level. It's a definite, definite love affair. This olive oil has a defect. And in the moment when we have a defect, we are not flexible. So what are we going to do? We're going to smash the oils, trying to look for first the defect. And if we don't find it, this is a good olive oil. And we need to study it to look for which smells we can find. For example, in the olive oil that we're going to taste, number one, I can help you a little bit, and I can tell you that we're going to find tomato smell. No defects, virgin, extracted mechanically, olive oil, natural juice from the olive. So what we need in the part of how to difference them and how to discover if our oil is extra or not. I'm going to do it first, look at me. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the biggest difference is the second one, the dark green one, there's a lot more spicy. It tastes just like this. When I threw it to the back of my throat, I could still feel the, the same kind of feeling where it's like, I never thought of olive oil as being spicy, but it does taste like it's, it like stings a little bit. It is, it is kind of spicy. I like this one. We start to give friction of it. Uh, there is a moment when we want to feel that the temperature of the glass is exactly the same. Please, what I want is that you feel if the olive oil has a defect or not. Hmm. Now, what we need to do is to close that glass. Glass number one, we need to close it. It's like wasabi, a little bit more of a pepper, so sure wasabi to the back of the throat. It's pretty intense actually, very surprisingly spicy. I never did. No? 
Don't worry, because from today you're going to do it almost once per month. <laughs> Okay, some chocolate ice cream and our orange infused olive oil on top. I'm a, I'm a newbie when it comes to olive oil. It's all very delightful. Add olive oil to everything, is basically what I heard him say. He's a good salesman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So not, not for any other words. No. Just by, no. Uh, normally, the so it's a restaurant material? Here 25, 35 years ago. What does it taste like? Okay, I need to tell you. The ice cream is a secret of a friend. Where he's a Michelin star chef. And Ooh. he's uh, a common on the restaurant to be served. It's a chocolate ball of ice cream with a crunch biscuit. A little bit of pink and salt, and more orange and salt. Very nice. A good tour always ends in the gift shop. We can pick out one of our favorites. Just be able to sneak this into every restaurant going forward. Just put it in the purse, bring it out at the moment in need. Another Spanish picnic featuring olives. Olives. So that was a fun day uh, at the olive um, plantation. We would call it. I didn't actually get an official word, but that's pretty much what it was in my mind. And we learned a lot about olives, which I love. Lots of new stuff. Uh, lots. There's lots of tricks in the trade, and I'm, I'm still a bit confused. Um, and, but I'm informed a little bit more, which I appreciate. And so in order to celebrate our olive afternoon and uh, one third of the world's olive oil producers in Spain, we're gonna have a little olive oil um, and olive celebration. I'm gonna try a couple different kinds of bread. I understand there's lots of different kinds of bread, but I am interested to see um, the difference between these, these pâtés. Fun. Easy. It's not runny, you know? This would be like something you'd put in your pocket. So you could just like dip your finger in it, you know? Give yourself a little hit, for sure. You don't worry about it spilling too. Taking the little uh, topping yod here. This is, um, looks like diced olives with all the oil intact and the oil um, with a little infused, uh, maybe pepper or tomato. And um, I don't know, maybe some, some seeds, it seems. Um, we'll taste this. Wow. Mm. All the oil comes through. I like the little pepper they put in there. It's so nice. Um, this is great. I'm trying to understand. I get it totally. I understand um, the difference now. But when you would want to use the pate over the tapenade, maybe there's like a sandwich kind of thing. Like if you don't want a lot of oil but you want the olive taste. It's kind of like a, it slides in there. It's not like over, but this is like front and center. This is the main thing. This is the only person in the room, you know? Amazing. Mm. Mm. I love it. It is nice. It's messy, but it's nice. I forget about the gluten rules in our household. Gluten's a sin for, it's funny because gluten's a sin for Allie, but she always looks for sin gluten. I don't really understand it. And uh, got a stuffed pineapple in there. And I think this is an olive oil. Nope, looks a little bit more watery. Wow, is that nice. Very nice. It's more of sugar water. It was in sugar water. That was easy, nice, lovely, 
uh, the sweetness on that olive it, with the pineapple is so good. Okay. So there's a few things I learned in España, and it's that olive oil goes on everything. And so it's always good to, you know, when in doubt, pour oil. So what I've done here is I've made myself a little cone. They also have the jamón cones, the ham cones, like an ice cream cone, but in Spain, it's filled with ham. And here, they also have the bread cones, see? So you just kind of let it rip, and, um, and you walk around and enjoy your afternoon, you know, look at sights, look at the sounds, uh, enjoy people, you know, just kind of really get to know the atmosphere, get to know, you know, the architecture, uh, put on your um, Rick Steves audio guides, and basically soak in Sevilla. And that's what I learned about Spain. It's kind of their, their mentality. It's like soak it in, uh, just take it easy, enjoy the moment, you know, don't uh, feel, you know, pressured to do anything you don't want to do and, and just really enjoy the moment so that's what I'm gonna do here so good being with you guys thanks for joining us on this olive oil tasting tour and here we go so nice mm. so fantastic so if it's not seeping out the sides it's not there's not enough in there so here's how you do a test. It's called the pinch test. It also works in marriage. You go like this. Pinch out the sides, see? That's when you know there's enough. Gotta work out the, the air bubbles. Right on. So I literally have never heard of sweet olives before. Let me know if you've ever even heard of that. Like I'm trying to go back into like the archives of my memory and think if anyone ever suggested or offered anything to do with dessert that was olive based. This works for me because this means you can have olives for the starter, for the main course, and then also for the dessert, which I think is like the perfect meal. If you ask me, if you look all the way back to like when we were in Greece before we started traveling full time, you know I love olives. So I was really excited about this when I saw it because it's like now I have the missing piece for the most perfect meal of my life. I loved it. Honestly, it was a beautiful day. Felt like I got to know olives in a much more intimate way. And um, yeah, I have no complaints at all. I thought it was a very unique experience like I've never thought of going to an olive mill before necessarily I never really put that much thought into it and the way that this um, mill in particular took care of the land and the trees and made sure they didn't use pesticides and found these creative ways to keep the insects away and how to get the olives out without damaging the tree and yeah I just loved learning all about that it was really cool I'm now gonna put some olive oil on my salad um, in Europe, for those of you who don't know, the only dressing is olive oil and balsamic. You don't get like 25,000 different options like you do in the United States. There's no like, can I have a raspberry vinaigrette or can I have an Italian dressing? If you say, can I have an Italian dressing and they look at you and they say, the real Italian dressing is olive oil and vinegar. So I don't know what you're trying to ask for right now because that's really Italian. Oh well. This. We got this at the gift shop. We got a couple of these things at the gift shop. The, the, um, they also had uh, uh, strawberry olives. So we got the pineapple olives and this and the two pates. I would definitely say um, as much as I love the, the sweet olives, I, I'm, I love the savory. I absolutely love the savory and I think this really is the winner um, of the th of the things that we got it's just like if you're gonna go and get one thing uh absolutely you need to get this one <laughs> so good.